Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. It's all unscripted. I don't know what objects are coming. I've got guests for you. We're going to give you expert answers to all of those questions. Thanks again for supporting the channel with super chats and super stickers. Let's get to my first guest. Hi, who's this? <laughs> How are you doing? Sorry. She That's okay. Why are you sorry? Bring them back. Shop. What are you doing? Bring them back. Are you in bed? Yes. <laughs> With the dog in bed. That's a good place, right? What's, I was very your comfortable and I wanted to watch the show very comfortably. What's your first name? Uh, my name is Alice. And what's this one's name? Chanel. Chanel and Alice. I like Chanel. Coco is somewhere in the other this side. This is of Chanel home. and this is Chanel. <laughs> it's all Chanel. Oh, and that's Chanel. Nice to see you, Alice. <laughs> How can I help you, hon? What have you got? I have this set of perfume. And Very have, nice. And then I have the powder set as well. Okay. It doesn't right. have any symbol on it. And I don't know if it's cut glass because I can't really tell if it's sharp enough to be cut glass or more. Put your finger in there. Put your finger right in there. Move it around. Are you? Do you feel like, oh my gosh, I should move my finger out? The edges on the bottom one are a lot sharper. Cut glass. Well, that you know why that is? That's because the oils on your hands are getting onto the top and the, and the top is always what's touched. Underneath, it's not touched as much. Oh. So yeah, they're usually a little bit sharper. That's fine. So so did you do any kind? How'd you acquire it? Let's start there. Um, it was at an antique shop. There was like mm -hmm. a whole tray of them. Um, the seller let me have the one another piece because it was broken and I, when I got these two. And there was also a tray um, that had the matching uh, top as well, but it's it's a bit big. Uh, okay, so you got the tray, you got that perfumier, and then you also got a powder yeah. box. And that's for pressed powder, for all of you who are not wearing pressed powder, but that's for pressed powder. Okay, so time period, when you look at it, you've got a cast metal finial. So it's cast brass metal finial. And show that to the camera. Get the, the finial portion up to the camera. There you go. No, that's not the camera. There you go. <laughs> All right. Can you turn it? Be careful, sweetheart. Just take your time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So your piece dates anytime between 1925 and 1940. It's cut glass. Actually, it's cut crystal. And then what you have also is you have that, that cast metal or cast brass finial, and they're both a match. Okay. Notice how one of them has a little bit more of a pedestal on the bottom to elongate the whole form. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's why, because that has to be long enough to fit in. Value on the perfumier, what you're holding in your hand, $140. Value on the powder is $90. So how much did you pay? There, um, it was $60 for the whole thing with the tray. Including the tray? And the two. Oh, gosh. You can, afford, you can afford another one. You can afford more Chanel. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was fun. Thank you That's so much. Nice, those are nice pieces. Um, it's, it's a crack up to see her in bed. I personally, I don't, I can't, I can't blame her. You know, you want to be comfortable. You're watching the show. It's a lot of fun. So thanks for being here. And thanks to all my guests who are here. And of course, I'll take your questions too. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. We're here with my next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Hi, Dr. Lori. It's me, Mona. I had Hello, Mona. I'm sorry, Mona. There's lots of you out there. So, you know, it's me, Mona. Know. Like I'm going to remember the millions of you. All right. So, what have you got, honey? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from San Diego, California. Okay. And I have, I have this really cool thing that goes in your chimney. It's brass. I'm not sure what's the name of it, but I'll bring it okay. up. It's really it goes big. in my chimney. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. Thank you very much. You look beautiful as always. Proceed you do to support you and share all over the internet. Kimberly, I'm grateful to you. I am grateful to all of you who share. To those of you who just watch, to those of you who say, I'm going to help support the channel with a super sticker, thank you for saying I look pretty, but I got to tell you, this is getting really to be a problem. There's a whole lot of this. Oh, what have you got? What are you holding? Oh, you've got a oh. fender. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. the uh, chimney. And it's this part. For the fireplace, darling. Fireplace, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The chimney's and up top. Feet that go with it. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have, there's two of these. And irons. Yeah. And irons that, okay, so those are ionic columns. You see those those columns like this, that little swoop? So those are classical revival ionic columns. These are all cast. Okay, those are good. And then you've got that big chimney with the big urn in the middle, right? The big lamp in the middle. 
Yeah. Be careful. Like, don't get hurt. Oh, well, she's fine. I'm going to stop saying don't get hurt because she's fine. And then you've got the fret pattern. So classical revival, when you see classical revival, when you see the fret pattern from the Greeks, when you see the lamp that looks like Aladdin's lamp, right? When you yeah. see those ionic columns, those columns from, of course, ancient Rome, I want you to think of the classical, right? So I want you to think of the late 19th century, the late 1800s. Then I want you to see the revival again in about 1925. So that whole set, you ready for this? Yeah. So tell me how much you paid first. Where did you get them? How much did you pay? $25 and I got it at a thrift store. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I am holding my head. All right. Okay. So here's what happens with this. So if you are not watching Real Bargains with me, when I reveal all these real bargains, I'm showing you what people are doing. They're paying, they're charging a lot at my thrift store. They're really high prices. I can't get anything for that. You're all, forget it. Because it's amazing. This is amazing. That fender right there is $400. And those two andirons are another $800. That's $1,200 bucks for a 25 Whoa. That's right, for a $25 investment. That's a real bargain. That's fantastic. Good for you. Oh my gosh. You got California sunshine and a real bargain. You yeah. had a good night. That's a good night. <laughs> wow. That's wonderful. Don't hurt yourself. You're making me nervous. <laughs> How do you feel? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you excited? Yeah, but I'm trying to remain very calm and professional because oh, I'm calm and professional. I'm never calm and professional. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Good for you. Congratulations. That's right. fantastic. Thanks, Mona. Well, Thank we won't forget Mona now. <laughs> that was great. But classical revival. So those elements that you're going to see, I want you to think about time period because certain motifs are known to certain time periods, right? What I also liked about that was that her set actually, of course, was a set in debt indeed. Yeah. Good for her, Jackie. Well, Jackie's had her fair share of cool stuff too. Yeah. Gringo, well done, Mona. Yeah, I love the fact that all everybody supports everybody on this channel. It's a fun channel. It's a happy channel, and I like that. Thanks for being my guest. It's a lot of fun. And here's another one. Oh, we've got the wheel. Hi, how are you? I'm Dr. Lori. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi again. It's Elsie from New York City. Hi, Elsie. How are you? I am very Elsie, good. How are you? So you're saying hi again. Have you had a video call with me? A lot of you are a lot of you are shy and you don't want to do this on the live stream. So a lot of you are doing video calls. How Elsie, are you? What have you got tonight? Well, I got, got a delay this. with Elsie. Thank you very much for the super sticker. Oh, looks like Amberina glass. How did you acquire this? Um, a sidewalk vendor. For five dollars today, a sidewalk vendor on what sidewalk? On what Broadway. Oh, on so you're Broadway. on Broadway and you walk. Oh, and somebody said I I got my wares out here on a table. Out here on a table. Yep. That's got to be fun. <laughs> oh, it's like the radio. We're getting your feedback. Okay, so that's a nice piece. So how much did you pay? A couple bucks. Five dollars. Five dollars. Okay. How do these people do that? So that piece is worth forty. How do these people actually? just only take five dollars for it well they probably got it for nothing right or they cleaned something out or they were able to take pieces or whatever it was or somebody gave it to them so remember you know the five dollar investment could go a long way but i would say that when you know what you've got you want to see it go a longer way elsie thank you thanks for being part of the show it's fun to see the pets <laughs> it's fun to of course you guys and talk about your object. So a lot of these pieces, thank you, Christina, very much for supporting the channel. I appreciate that. And KNS, thank you for supporting supporting the channel. We recognize, I like to recognize as many of you as possible. This is an opportunity for you folks to, in fact, of course, ask me live, whether it's questions or if you want to be part of the live stream, whatever you want to do, I'm happy to answer them uh, tonight with all of my guests. And if you, as I said, if you're shy and you want to do a video call and you want to have one-to-one -one with me without everybody else watching and commenting and such, you could do that too. Just get in, in touch with me through drlaurieve.com, which is of course here, drlaurieve.com. And you can check us out right on the website. It's very easy to do it from there too. Okay. So lots of guests, lots of people are waiting in, in the queue trying to get in. So let's see. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's your first name? And can you hold your camera horizontally, please? Can do. Thank you, hon. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nadine from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Hi, Regina. Nice to see you. Good. 
Um, yeah. You're I'm Nadine. Gonna, Wait yes. a minute. You're Nadine from Regina. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I got a, um, I was uh, left a vase from my mother-in-law. She always had it on her little You were shelf. left a vase. So if you yeah. left a vase, then it's worth $100,000 or more, well, as we used to say when I was at the Yale Art Gallery. It's a well, vase. It's worth that. So it if it's a vase, it might be worth less. Right. All yeah, right. Kathy, yeah. thanks for the super sticker. Um, so was, can I see it? Was, it was just a uh, collector of items inside it, and I took it home. And Can decided, I see it? Yeah. Can I see it? Okay. So Can we see uh, the bottom? Yeah. It's a nice glaze, nice heavy glaze. So that piece has been in your family for 30, 40 years? At least, yeah. At least, okay. Yeah. It probably dates to the 1960s. Okay. And that and that piece is a very nice bulbous glaze. Um, yeah. We'd have to do a little bit of work on understanding the very, very difficult signature there. We took more time to basically have an idea of that. Can I see the inside if you look inside so I can show you guys sure. what to look for? Because that's going to help all of you. It's not going to just help Oops. Nadine. There you go. Okay. So dark and cobalt glaze all the way through the bottom. So typically that piece is going to be more of a presentation piece and a piece where you could put flowers in it, but oftentimes people don't put flowers in it. They just, they just actually present the actual piece. Right. Value on the piece, which dates to the middle years of the 20th century, about $85 to $100. It's nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even though it's a Moorcroft? That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. Nice to see you. Great. Based on actual sales records. Now, what's happening right now with pieces like Moorcroft? People say, well, it's a Moorcroft, so isn't it worth more? Well, you're seeing a lot of these pieces coming onto the market right now. And I analyze the entire market. I don't just look at one particular place where people are buying or selling objects. I look at the whole market. So those pieces are not your characteristic, oh, we, we see that we go, oh, Moorcroft, that's exactly what I was looking for. So it's a nice piece, it's a big piece, and she's probably in that $100 range. Could she command more? You could probably command more if that piece, of course, had more of its characteristic features. Hi, where were you? You weren't here? What were you doing? Getting a drink, having dinner? What's going on? She just sat down. Jeez. I'm Dr. Lord. Hey, I'm Marilyn, and this is David. Hi, Marilyn and David. How are you doing? What are you We're watching in the back, me? Oh, you're watching me in the back. I'll wave to him. <laughs> <laughs> we got That's our baby cool. over there, too. Our baby, Tahila over there you should all have me on in the back all the time just always have it on. <laughs> we usually do anyway so where are you guys i'm in pennsylvania in the studios where are you we're in alabama alberta nice. alabama nice okay okay i'm here so, close to the goal <laughs> what can i talk to you about tonight we okay. acquired this at a estate sale we got it for five dollars this is the certificate of authenticity from the person know. who sold it to you? Uh, no. Um, it came in the packet. Correct. Uh, okay. This so is somebody. Somebody sold what came in the packet to somebody else, and they gave them a certificate of authenticity. Is somebody who's selling you somebody? If somebody who's selling you something, are they going to tell you that they sold you something fake? I mean, I want you to think about these certificates of authenticity. This is a certificate of authenticity. I'm so impressed. Okay, I'm not. And here's why I'm not. I'm sure you're not too, David. But basically, the person who's selling it has to give them some kind of guarantee. So they came up with this idea of these certificates of authenticity. Gotcha. What you have there, what you showed me, looked like a, uh, an image from the Portinari altarpiece. Let me see what you did. It's yeah, okay. So this looks like, um, of course, van der Weyden. This looks like the work of some... And that's the view of Toledo. That, of course, is... It was that, just of course, a collection that came all together. All together. So you've got all of these different treasures in art, right? Very, very famous artworks. And these are color lithographs. So it was very commonplace that when you went to um, a particular area, if you went on a tra traveling or if you went to a museum, you would be able to purchase these. So you would have a portfolio of some of the best of the best, you know? Before we, you know, at, before we had all these digital images and you could just bring up these beautiful pictures from great museums and videos, you actually had to buy these booklets or these portfolios. So what did you pay for this portfolio and the certificate of authenticity that went with it? <laughs> uh, well, it was, uh, it says um, 36 full color reproductions, uh, mm -hmm. of course, and we paid $5 uh, altogether <laughs> for the whole bundle uh, for yep. all 36 reproductions of the different Artworks. Oh, the different works of art. 
So yes, those different sure. works of art are from all different museums, right? The Prado in in Madrid, and another one is from the Rijksmuseum, and then and, and the great artists will be there, right? It so there's a Rembrandt. Courtesy, um, read that it please. says courtesy the the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The Metropolitan Museum of Art. <laughs> okay, so they basically are trying to promote their collections. So they do this usually in the 50s or the 60s. Value on each one is about $10 for each one. So you paid $5 for 36. $10 for 36 would be 360, right? That, and if you were to sell them individually. But they're color reproduction prints. And there's lots of them out there. That's why they're not worth all that much. Okay? For a $5 investment, you did pretty well, but you'd have to sell them individually in order to get your money back. Right. Thank you so Thanks much. Thank you very much. Nice to see you from Alabama. Bless yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. I am blessed. I'm a lucky girl. So a couple of different things. Um, those pieces, I would say, you know, they're color reproductions. There's many of them out there, but they only saw, they only paid $5 for them. It's nice to have those pieces out and about. Also notice that a lot of them were rel relatively dark or tanned, right? So that means that they've been in that acidic folder for a long time, probably decades. But it's good to do that to see those pieces because you can learn about the great works in the history of art. It's a nice way to learn about them. A great way is, of course, to go to the museums yourself if you can. So thank you very much, Lori, for that super sticker. I appreciate all of you who are focusing on, of course, super chats and super stickers. Well, I might know these guys. <laughs> hey. so here you are, Mike and Jack. And how are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing good. You're still here. That's good. A little bit of, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Everybody's focusing on the puppies and the, and the kitties tonight. That's know, good. Good to see you. Good to see you. you. We've got a vintage Nirvana t-shirt on, too. T-shirts, of course. No. You know, these T-shirts from these concerts are really pretty collectible. You know, um, okay. you'd be surprised how, you, I you know, I, I hate to say Nirvana's <laughs> vintage, but, you know. Mm. Yeah, okay. nice. Thank you. Okay, what have, we, what have we got, guys? Yeah, so we got this at an estate sale. It's by Joe Scopa, and he did it on a magazine. So you can't see it here because it's behind, like, this board. But there's a magazine, like, behind the cardboard. Uh Okay, so there's the, the work of art is actually drawn onto a magazine. Yeah, or? it was. And there was a message on it too. Um, it was it was interesting. Oh okay. So yeah. <laughs> Jack, get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you gotta get it in front of that camera for me without the glare. Okay. Give me a tilt. Give me a tilt on it. Okay, that's good. Okay. Oh, uh, that's pretty nice. That's characteristic. Of the artist style, that piece of course is 20th century, and I would say value on is it uh, 11 by 14? Is it 16 uh, by 20? No, it's like 11 by 11 by 14, I think. 11 it's, by 14. Yeah. The frame, of course, is is much earlier than the piece. I would say value yeah. on the piece about 300. dollars Nice. Oh, How much please. did you pay? Uh, I think I paid six bucks for it. <laughs> six bucks. Yeah. All right. That's good for 300 And 300 <laughs> includes the frame. The frame's worth about 75 A sweet awesome. deal. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Happiness and good health to you. <laughs> you Thank too. you. It's good to see you. Nice to see you. So anyway, um, a lot of artwork and a lot of those things that a lot of people don't think about. So I want you to focus on some of those things too. Like, of course, the concert t-shirts. Think about these things that you might find in the thrift store, the yard sale, the antique shop. And I want you to focus on those too, because sometimes those can help, of course, stimulate your reselling business, or it can add to a great collection just for yourself. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm happy to take your questions. And here's another guest. Uh, these appraisals, of course, are provided here. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm fine. Where are you? And what's your first name? My name is Chance, and I'm in Florida. Nice to see you, Chance. Um, this is uh, my my grand my my mother's grandparents were um, pretty well off, really well to do I should say. And uh, this mine is weren't. A, this mine is weren't a, at all. Right. This is a. I, so what I do you mean when you say when you say they were they were relatively well off or well to do? Did they have a big business? Did they make good investments? Did they own a lot of land? What is my that mean? my great grandfather was actually a key player in the investors industry before they knew it was bad. So he was like a key player in that industry. And then they found out that asbestos was terrible for everybody. You know? Oh, asbestos. Okay. Yes, yes, asbestos. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Um, but this is a, a, a I, I learned from you or I'm doing some research that uh, it's a peer cabinet. Uh, I was told it was a hat cabinet by my mother growing up. Um, but it, 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 uh, it's got a lining on the, on the inside. Um, we, we use it kind of like a bar. Um, yeah. But, but I was, you know, it's, it's very intricate, has a lot of, uh, details in it, so it's just kind of curious what he's on. So when you say it's very intricate, it has a lot of details. You mean the painting on top of the wood? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I would say that it is decorated. I don't think it's very intricately decorated. Okay. And and that's just semantics. You know, that's sure. words. Sure, I don't I think it's you know so detailed, but I think it's nice. I think it's nicely made. It dates to probably the mid the 1825 to 1875 time period. So right smack in the middle of the Victorian. Okay. Um, is it five feet tall? Is it four and a half feet tall? I can't see the bottom. Can I see it's, the feet? Sure. It's uh. There you go. It's forty-seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's forty-seven inches uh, tall and right. thirty-one wide and sixteen deep. So it's four feet forty-one. Okay. Right. So um, just under four feet. So sure. basically, those are called bracketed feet, where you see that kind of curve. Uh -huh. And those feet are you typically will see as early back as, of course, colonial time period, the late 1700s. And then, of course, you'll see them revived throughout the 19th century or the 1800s. Value okay. on that piece, $1,500. I wouldn't be surprised if in a very good furniture market, you could command as much as $2,000 for it in that condition. Condition is beautiful. Um, and these are based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. And they've sold in the open market. It's not a forced sale. OK, sure, that sure. means that the buyer and the seller have both agreed. Then there's no reason for them not to make the sale. OK, so okay. there's an agreement with the sale. It's not a for sale. Oh, I'm going to you know, twist your arm and you're going to have to buy it for this value for this price. So based on actual sales records, and that's very important. And it's important whether or not you are looking at sales records from auctions or from private sales or from, of course, dealerships, which are retail sales. So. Be careful. You need to know the different types, but that's a very nice piece. It's a nice family heirloom. It's good that it's still in um, your family, has been come down um, in your family. The other thing that I like about it is I like that the interior has been protected too. With case furniture like this, I want you to open it up about once a month for about eight hours and let some heat escape. Even if you I, keep nothing in it, I still want some to have some um, pieces escape. Mary we Deathly, definitely do that you want to talk about family. dresses? Mary Deathly, you want to talk about dresses when I'm talking about case furniture that you could actually know about? Let's focus on the object we're talking about. Thank you very much, Chance. Nice to see you. Um, Mary Ann, thank you very much. This is better than date night. Well, I don't have many dates, so this is better than date night for me. <laughs> I would think that you probably have a lot of dates. So, And if the date, if this is as good as your dates or better, good. That's what I like to hear. So thanks so much for joining me. Here's That's another behind. guest. There we go. We're in. Hi, how are you? Down. So you can hear me. Yeah, you can't have other devices on and record while you're recording you. and all of this. Hi. I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? You can't hear her. I can't hear her. Oh, can't hear me. Okay. Well, can't hear me. Oh, well, you know, no, they'll get I can't there. hear they'll Dr. Their, they'll try they'll get their act together. They'll figure it out. <laughs> um, I appreciate you trying to be you being ready when of course we get to you. We want to make sure that we get to all of you. So thanks so much for that. And of course, um, thanks always to my team. Mick, thank you very much. Date night with Dr. Lori Hooray. Well, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. A lot of you have been very busy. Um, hi, Dr. Lori. How do I get two items appraised by you together written? Only have the option for one sales record, $59. I have all kinds of options, Alex Brando. I mean, lots of options. So you can do that by going to drlorev.com. And there's actually a contact form there. So you can contact if you have some complex issue that you want me to try to solve for you. I'll try to help you. drlorev.com. It's very simple. So, I mean, it's not, oh, you only have one thing. I have all kinds of things. I do all kinds of things for people. So, sure, I'll be happy to help if I can. I suggest you go to drlorev.com. You can start at the specials and shop page, or you can always, of course, go to our contact button and send an email. All right. Um, we're, I'm taking your questions, and, of course, I have guests. I'm, again, all unscripted. I don't know what's coming. So, whatever's coming, I don't know. I don't know what objects they have for me. I'd like you to hold your camera horizontally, please. So I can see you right now. You have your camera vertically. There we go. Much better. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
just when I thought I had everything worked out for you. You were fine. <laughs> You're okay. Hey, I got. I tried to get it right. Anyway, um, Susan, thank hi, you for the super how are you tonight. I'm fine. What's your name and where are you calling yeah. from? My name is Marilyn, and I'm calling from Virginia, just outside. Oh, of Marilyn, Smith, nice to see Virginia. you. Nice hey, to see you from Virginia. We went to Goodwood, and um, we we found this incredible find. At least I think it's incredible. Let's can I see it? Aimed up here. I'm trying. Okay. Is that, can you see that? All right. Yeah, that's nice. So, is it signed? And what's incredible about it? It's it's got a name and it's signed and it looks great. It's got this uh, provenance tape down the back of it. Can you read that? How about some specifics, Marilyn? Marilyn, some specifics. What's the name on the front uh, since you keep moving it around? This was drawn by this guy for um, his name is Miss Watercolors Painted by Rudy Rudy Wendelin in July 1970 in Washington. He works for the U.S. Forest Service, and it was drawn for a man named William Nelson as a retirement gift. That's right. nice. But this, the okay. thing is we, the sticker's on the back for $1.99, too. But okay, so you paid $1.99, right? You paid $1.99, right, Marilyn? Yeah, $1.99. You paid $1.99. Okay, let's let's keep the camera right there for a minute, Marilyn. Let's keep the Let's keep the camera right there. Let's take a look at this. So this particular piece is an original watercolor. That's one. Yes. So it's an original yes. watercolor. It's not an aqua tint. It's not a print of a watercolor. It's an original watercolor. So that brings value yes. from here to here. And that's important right. when you have an original work of art. It's in yes. a acid matte from about the 1970s. So it's probably in the original frame as long and in addition to being from the in the original matte. That mat is acidic, so you do have to change out the mat, but you could still keep the frame, right? Artist is a middle tier artist, relatively well known in a particular region, middle tier. Yeah, he's not Picasso, everybody knows him everywhere. He's middle tier, that's fine. Value on, how big is that piece? Eight by 10, 11 by 14? I'm sorry, I, I'm hard to Marilyn, eight by 10, 11 by 14, how big is it? It, the frame is 15 by 12 and a half, and the print inside okay. is 8 by 11. 8 by 11. So value on that piece is $75 for the watercolor and another 50 for the frame. Thank you, Marilyn. The painter. She got it at Goodwill. That's wonderful. So she got a great deal. I always tell you also, be polite, but negotiate. Is that your best offer? Really? Always ask for a better deal. I know you've probably said it a hundred times, but where do you find the loop? I have said it a million times. <laughs> <laughs> the bag is the tote bag, and that's, of course, on YouTube. The loop you can find if you go to drlaurieV.com, the specials and shop page, and then scroll down once you get to my website at drlaurieV.com, and you'll see Go Shopping Now. You'll click that blue link that says Go Shopping Now right next to the picture of the loop. Here's the loop, right? Here it is. And then what I want you to do is Go Shopping Now. It'll take you to a page. Open up all of those accordions. It'll show you all the different products that I recommend. Click on it there. That's going to take you to an Amazon page. And then you're going to do all of your transaction there. And yes, I do get a benefit for that. What I do is utilize that benefit so I can make more videos for all of you. Having said that, it's right there on the, at the drlaurieV.com website. Not difficult. And I'm you can ask a million times. I don't care. I'll repeat myself. It doesn't matter. It's fine. I want you to get the loop because the loop is a money magnet. It'll show you what to look for. Clados. Dr. Lori, any information on Montana artist Al Guise? Is it guys or geese? So what information do you want? You got to show me a picture. If you want to show me a picture of it, I'll be really happy to take a look at it, do some research for you, and find out what your piece is worth compared to other pieces of his oeuvre or of his career work. So I'll be happy to do that. That's no problem. Um, but a lot of those artists who are of a particular region or state or place do very, very well in that particular place too. Uh, Nika, I picked up a signed watercolor pool and Norton. Oh, okay, on watercolor paper. So you recognize watercolor paper. That's great. Good. Watercolor paper, a little bit thicker. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't read the whole thing. So 16 by 20. Is it worth your time for me to get in touch with you? for It's always worth my time. What worth my time? Am I running out of time? No. 
I all worth my time. Send me the picture. I'll be happy to take a look at it. The question really you want to ask is, is it worth your time to send it in? Yes, it's worth your time. I mean, I've got expert eyes. I've been doing this for decades. I'm going to know, and I'm going to share my information with you. Is it worth your time? It's worth it. Send me the picture. Marilyn, hi. You're so grateful for my expertise. David and I had a blast. Oh, you're sweethearts. I'm happy to do that. Nice to see you. And thanks for being a guest tonight and always. Keep watching. Keep sharing. Don't forget to share the channel, please. How do you know that something's an, an acid mat? We're going to put up the big share page, the big share um, lower third while we remember that because I need you to share. Acid mats are very easy to identify. If you look at the mat, right? So this is the artwork. My hand's the artwork and there's a mat that goes around it. And then there's a frame out here. If you look, that's called the window where the mat is. It's the window to the artwork, right? If you look at that mat and you see brown all the way down, you know, brown. Well, my hair is kind of black today because the, the salon made it really dark, but, but usually it's brown. <laughs> so brown, right? If you see that brown line all the way around the window of your mat, that mat is acidic. And that brown or that tanning will actually go over the whole print or the whole work of art and it will damage the work of art. That's how you know if you have an acid mat. I've shown you acid mats in my other videos as well. So you can check the videos to find more acid mats, but it's very simple to find an acid mat. Very good question. Thank you. All right. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm the PhD Antiques Appraiser and I'm taking your calls. Hi, I'm Dr. Hey. Lori. What's your name? I'm Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Where are you in the country tonight? Where I'm in world? Newton, Georgia. Georgia. Georgia, yep. Georgia. Okay. So let's see. What have we got? Oh, nice. All right. So gilded. You've got some nice moriage painting on it. It's a nice piece of amber glass. Where do you think it's from? I have no idea. Yes, you do. <laughs> Is there a mark on the bottom? All right. So a couple places where this is made. Bohemia, right? So Bohemian glass, you've heard of that. It's also made in the United States in Wheeling, West Virginia. Which do you think you have in Georgia? Do what? Sorry. Where do you think yours comes from? I Czechoslovakia, no Bohemia, or does it come from West Virginia if you're sitting in Georgia? What are the odds? West Virginia. Yeah, the odds are pretty good that yours is from West Virginia. But you could see them, and I have seen lots of them that come out of the Czech Republic, basically. Bohemia glass is what they would call it. And how did you acquire your piece? At the Goodwill. Are there any chips on the painting of the flowers? They're not that I can tell. It's really good condition. Okay, be very careful with it. Okay. Um, I did a video call today and the woman just kept putting her hand over the print. She kept putting her hand over the print. I was like, Will you stop doing that? I finally said, You've got to stop doing that. So just be careful with it. It's very nice. Um, I like the condition very much. Time period, it dates to about the 1960s, 1970s. Value on it, about $65. How much did you pay at Goodwill? $3.99. I like it. It's a real bargain. Yay, mm. Thank you. And you're welcome. And don't miss, of course, tomorrow night's premiere of my more my amazing finds, a new series. You love real bargains? You're going to love this, too. All of you have asked me, Dr. Lori, where did you find this? Dr. Lori, what have you seen at your events? And I've put together some of my favorite finds, my favorite amazing treasures. And these are just some of them that I'll talk about. There are lots of great stories that I'm going to tell. And I'm going to premiere that tomorrow night. So I hope you'll join me at the live premiere. I'll be there too um, at 5 Eastern time. So that's uh, Sundays at 5 Eastern time. All right. Lots of great things. Lots of great guests. It's nice for you to take the time to be with me. Thank you very much. Oh, perking up. Okay, ready yes. to go. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. I'm Kathy. I'm calling from Columbia, South Carolina. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Good? I am wonderful. Oh, it's nice to see you. I have a Chinese bowl. I believe it's a double happiness pattern. That's the um, pattern, yes. It was made in Macaw. It, was I, made in Macaw. it says made in Macaw on it? Yeah, it has a sticker. I'll show you the back. All right. Whoops. There you right. go. Okay, here you go. Made in Macaw, so they don't want you to use it for food service. Right. Right, and it's got the brass around it. Yes. Very typical. We've seen a lot of these. These are mass-produced in large numbers. Okay. What does that do for value? Freeze it down. I know, but that's okay, because as long as you know that. Uh, yes. Brass piece, middle years of the, uh, you know, 1975, 1985. Value on that piece is going to be about $25. What'd you pay? 
I paid one dollar at a charity garage sale. That's nice. That's good. Yeah, so you helped I'm the charity good. and you got something and you made 24 bucks too. Great. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you. So those pieces of ceramic are very nice. Those pieces, of course, um, are mass produced in large numbers. They try to sort of beef it up a little bit. Like I don't need beefing up, but you know, they try to beef it up with that nice piece of brass. Like you can now put it right up on the wall and display it. The double happiness is something that a lot of people like to have around the house. Um, I was talking on my story. I don't know if you follow my YouTube stories, but I was talking about chi, you know, and how certain pieces in my house have to be moved because the chi is all wrong. I didn't know the chi was wrong. So anyway, uh, I was moving some things, but that made me think of that because some of those symbols, of course, are very important for maintaining, of course, good flow of energy. So I'm learning about new things as you guys are teaching me about new things too. Coffee is so much better in the Dr. Lori. I know the Dr. Lori mug is cool. You know why? Because you guys are priceless. That's what Dr. Lori says. So get yourself a mug. It supports the channel or maybe a tote bag, but thank you for that. I appreciate you drinking out of that mug <laughs> and for supporting the channel with purchases of the merchandise from Dr. Lori. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, Jessica. See, Jessica has the hair color that I had before this salon trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like. Hi, Jessica. What's Hi, how are you? On? Where are you? I'm in Pennsylvania. Where are you? I'm in Oklahoma City. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. So um, what can I talk with you about tonight? Thanks for joining me. Yeah. Um, so I got this book. Um, right. Well, actually, I bought about 200 books on an auction for like $7. You bought 200 books <laughs> for $7 or this book for $7? Um, like 200 books about in an auction. And I found this book and I looked it up on. Why would um, you let 200 books go? 200 of anything go for $7. I, I have mean, no idea. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be surprised by this because I see this every day. I talk about this all the time, but it still amazes me, especially when it's books, because there's a very good shot. There's a very good chance that you're going right. to find something pretty valuable. All right. I'm sorry. I'll digress. You continue. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I had just found this book. Um, particularly interesting. I looked it up on the Library of Congress and could uh -huh. only find one copy. Oh, um, okay. Well, they probably made more than one copy, but go ahead. Right. But anywhere so, in the library. So I didn't know anything about it. So if it's wealth you desire, and this is the financial education publishers. So some folks have come together and created their own little publishing house, right? Uh -huh. If it's wealth you desire, this person is going to teach you how to get wealth. I've been teaching you how to get wealth. And you know what you're all telling me? You got wealth because you watch the channel, you follow the channel, you used my tips and you flip to things for good money. So yes. you found this book. And then what else did you find out about this book in your travels, in your research? Um, I know that George, it's written by George Clayson and he's mm -hmm. written, written several books, different uh, books, books on, on finance. Topic. Right. Yeah, and right, okay. It looked, to be, it looked to be like the same stories that came, he wrote later. Um, okay. Like so, maybe this is a previous version. Previous version, and then he does a compilation book yet later. Okay. Right. Is there a copyright date in it from the early years of the 1900s? Um, it says 1940. 1940. So wait, so let's look at this. So it says copyright, and there's four or five different copyright dates. So the one that you want is you want the first one, which would be the, I can't really read it from here, but the first copyright date is what? Um, 1930. Okay. So that would be the one that you'd want. You'd want the copyright date that's mm -hmm. the first one, right? The edition that's earliest. You have right. a later edition, so value goes down. Value right. on the book, probably about $20. Okay. But you got 200 for seven. So what is that? Oh. A couple cents for that book. Right. So that's a pretty exactly. good deal. If you're and collecting book, I'm sorry, go ahead. What? I said in lots of cookbooks. And lots of cookbooks. Yeah, cooks books, yeah. children's literature. And of course, you know, if it's of a theme. So financial books are fine. You know, um, now, what's the word? Novels are also important. And mm -hmm. they usually go pretty high. But if you are collecting books, I want you to be aware. And I want you to be careful. I want you to make sure that before you bring any books that you have collected from anywhere else into your home, I want you to leave them out in a, a cold place for at least okay. a day or two. And the idea is that if there are any active bugs, they can, in fact, get themselves out of the book. So you've got to be careful about, of course, where these books have been. You don't want to 
bring in books that might be infested. So be aware of that. But congratulations, 200 for seven bucks is good. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for being with me. So a lot of tips and some other information as we go through. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter because there's lots of tips and other information there too. And my newsletter, you can find at drlaurieV.com and it's free. You can subscribe to the newsletter on my website at drlaurieV.com. And I hope that you'll do that. Then you'll get my tips and a lot of other insider, the inside scoop from my newsletter will come right into your email box. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. This is Dr. L Ask Dr. Lori Live, and I'm taking your um, questions, and I'm also, of course, answering your questions, expert answers to your questions right here. And I've got guests. I don't know what's coming next, but let's see. Hi, my name's Dr. Lori. What's yours? Hi, I'm Pam. Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice I'm to. Fine, thanks. What was where that? You, where you, I'm fine. Thanks. Where are you calling from? Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm. Uh... You're okay. Oh, I thought she was okay. Maybe not. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Maybe she's back. I don't know. Hi, how are you? We'll get back to her. She might come back. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Denise from Edmonton, Alberta. Hi, Denise. So tell me, what have you got in this frame? Looks like a Michael Kulik frame. It looks like a <laughs> 70s frame. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it said it was sold in 1975. Yeah, uh, yeah you think I would know. That's a good thing I would know that. <laughs> <laughs> you get paid the big bucks for this. Yes, I, I get hope. paid the big bucks. <laughs> I hope. Uh, so this is a... Well, you can pay me the big bucks. All you have to do is a super chat or a super sticker. It's not big. I did. I know you I did. did. <laughs> and I appreciate anybody who does it, and I appreciate everybody who watches, too. I'm just saying that, you know, basically, you all support the channel. Watch, share, super chats, whatever it might be. Um, but yep. most of all, I want you to learn. I want you to get it. So turn on those videos and watch those videos. How'd you acquire this piece from the mid 1970s? Oh, uh, I bought it in an auction. Okay. It, this one was twelve dollars and fifty cents. All right, that's a little expensive, isn't it? Twelve dollars is kind of getting it's up Canadian. There, right? It's Canadian. <laughs> oh, Canadian! I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So and do you know where this this scene is? So it really looks uh, New England to me. It's got that real New England feel to it. Um, so I'm assuming like, I was assuming Massachusetts and on the back it says Amherst. Okay. So a couple of things, when I look at it, now I grew up in New England. So when I look at it, I would say, oh, all right, it's going to be one of those, those particular places. Here are the tricks. If you can learn the architecture, you can <clears> learn <throat> what, what. I want you to look at this, this particular, you see that house with the two chimneys? Yep. And those two chimneys indicate that there's a central hall inside the house, which is something that you see in architecture in the late 17, early eight, 1700s, early 1800s. The Are other you talking thing salt is, box houses? That's or not a salt box right no? there. That's not salt. But salt boxes are also typical of New England. That's true. So, and if you look at the larger building, right, which looks like it actually, if you can put it in onto the, there you yep. go. So if you look at the larger building that actually has that cupola all the way up, that spire, mm -hmm. right? Like a church building, or sometimes right. that building would be uh, the building, you'll see a civic building. Those are usually in the middle, of course, of a town. Okay. So that particular building would also say New England to me because there's going to be a church central and then there's going to be a big manor house or a big house that's right next to it. That's typical okay. of New England. Now, of course, Amherst is where... Amherst College and also where the University of Massachusetts has Amherst is. And it's not Amherst, it's Amherst. And I know you're all going about my, my speech impediment and my accent and my New England and all this stuff, but that's what it is. So you were absolutely right to identify it as New England. And then you were able to get it confirmed when you turned it over. So look at the whole piece, right? So it looks to me like a watercolor. Yes. Okay. So it looks like a watercolor. Is it signed? Yes, it is. Um, Stephen Hamilton. Were you able to find Stephen Hamilton, who was painting uh, in that area during that time? Yes. Good. Okay. So value on that piece, about $150, the original work of art. Stephen Hamilton, relatively well-known, Massachusetts-based watercolorist. Good for you. How much did you pay? Uh, $12.50. Ah, oh, yes, you told me that. Twelve fifty dollars is good for that much because you paid about 10%. And that's what I like to see you do. I like to see you in that 10% or less category. And then, of course, you're going to make the other 90% if you flip it or whatever you do. Remember, acid match, you want to remove them. 
Jackie, thank you very much for the super sticker. Jackie, thank you very much for the super sticker too. I appreciate both of them and all of them uh, as it helps us to do things like give you the Dr. Lori cam, which we use a lot and also to do more videos. So, and to of course um, support my staff who are here. I couldn't do it without them. Thanks for being with me. We've got another guest. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. My name is Cindy. I'm from Philadelphia. Hi, Cindy. Nice to see you. You've got Anibale Karachi behind you. Yeah, so let me get out of the way. Okay. So this so, is a needlepoint that oh, I found at okay. the Goodwill. Yeah, it's needlepoint. I don't know okay. if it's worth anything. Um, okay. Anibale Karachi is a very well-known artist, Italian. And um, in fact, he and his brother were very well-known artists. And this is an image of the boys eating grapes, the boys okay. eating fruit, but particularly the boys eating grapes um, that comes into widespread use just after, of course, the Renaissance period into the 1500s, 1600s. Okay. It's a wonderful piece and it's all needlepoint. These needlepoint craft pieces are coming back so strong. So many people are looking for them in the market. It's amazing. Yours looks like it's pretty big. Yeah. It's about 24 by 36, and the back of it says that um, somebody made it in Hungary. So. Wow, that's wonderful. That's a beautiful piece. I would say value on that is going to be about 200 to $250 with the frame. All right. What did you pay? $16 at Goodwill. <laughs> Yay. Good for you. That's terrific. Yay. That's great. So tips I want to remind you about with these kinds of pieces. If they're in a frame, I want you to keep them in the original frame. It's difficult to reframe these tapestries, cruel work, embroideries that are in a frame. Um, sometimes these pieces are made for that particular frame. So if you don't like the frame, you might want to just decide you're going to live with it. Maybe you could repurpose it a little bit. Maybe if you're talented, I'm a talented, I couldn't paint or you know draw you a stick figure, but maybe you're talented and you want to kind of spruce it up but I would say with those pieces, keep the frame that it is in intact. You might have trouble. You might, I've seen where these pieces start to fray if you take it out of the original frame. Good for you, my Philly friend. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Eclectic Deb. I appreciate that. Hiding in the mirror. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate all of them. And I appreciate all of you being with me. Thanks also to my guests. Here's another guest. Oh, we're back. Yay. We're back. Hi. How are you doing? I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's this? Well, technically my name is Rachel, but I'm trying to help my sister because this is her piece and I follow you and I came four hours down here and she's like, oh, Dr. Lori's going live. So we're trying to get you. Well, here you go. You got me. That's right. I asked for the super sticker. I appreciate her support. And so tell me, Rachel and your sister's name is? Erin. Erin, I'm sorry. So, okay, you, you went four hours and you were getting together and you said, I'm going to have Dr. Lori take a look at this. That's right. How'd you acquire this? She said she bought it at an antique store maybe 10 to 15 years ago. It looks like sort of a little sleigh. It, uh, it is. If yeah, there we can, go. That's yeah. what I wanted to see. Okay, so now if you look at this piece, there's a painting on one side. Yes. Right? There's a painting on the other side too? Yes. Okay, so you don't have to put it up against the wall so you don't, can't see one side, right? No. Okay, and then you've got the handle at the top, which looks like it's turned, and then you've got all of these little floral rosettes which were carved, and then they're painted lightly, correct? Yes. What's on the front of the head? Show me the um, head. It looks front. like a rooster. Or uh, like a duck or something with a yeah. bill, huh? Okay, and then more landscapes, more landscape paintings all the way around. Yes. All right. Markings or labels? None? None. All right. Dates to the 1940s. It's called the Victorian Revival. It's trying to look like the Victorian era from 1837 to 1901, but actually it's about 50 years after the height of the Victorian, which is 1890, 1880, 1890. 50 years later, we're at the 1940s prior to World War II. So this piece you're going to see, and you're going to see this piece being utilized for small children typically, and it's gonna sit in a corner, usually of a bedroom or of a living room. And it can also be utilized for dolls. So a lot of people will actually use it for dolls too. Um, how long is it? Would you say it's 22 inches, 28 inches from the top of that handle all the way to the head of that rooster? Probably 28. Probably 28? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh oh, somebody's look. Somebody's they're gonna measure for you. On. There it is. <laughs> Thank you to the man in the pink shirt. The bottom <laughs> to this, yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think it's twenty-eight. That's my sister's husband. Twenty-eight. Yeah, right mm -hmm. on twenty-eight. Right on yeah. 28. Yeah. Well, you would think I'd know that, right? <laughs> Value. Thank you, sir. Value on that piece is $150. I like that a lot. Nice. Nice. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. My pleasure. It's nice to see when certain works of art come together. For example, that piece had, of course, the carvings. It had some painting, and then it had a nice landscape all the way around. And, you know, I want you to know about size because, you know, size matters. Size matters when it comes to works of art. So make sure that you get out those measuring tapes. And thank you. He was he was on a mission. He was like, I'm getting that. <laughs> so thank you for that too. But um, usually they're not any they're not any bigger than that. Mrs. Tempting Treasury, because of you, I saved one of my clients' value pieces of art from a from a mild dot starting because it was pressed up against the glass without a mat. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm happy to share my expertise. I'm glad that you're able to help your clients. And of course. Um, I'm happy to help all of you with sharing this information as well as appraisals. And it's important because, you know, then they know, hey, you know, you have a res they have a resource in you. Thanks for the great info. I can't believe I was on the live so much fun. You were on the live with me. Thank you. And I'm happy that you were. Thanks for being with me. I appreciate that. So we've got lots of guests. We've got lots of fun. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Hit the like button. And of course, don't forget to share. I want to see lots of shares. I want to tell you that Rudy Wendell is the artist who created Smokey Bear and all artwork about him for 40 years. My artwork was a good bargain. Good for you, Marilyn. That's great. So it's wonderful that you are doing some more research. Make sure that the sources that you are taking information from are accurate sources. Don't believe everything that you read. There's a lot of misinformation out there too. So make sure that you get the information from the true source, the person who, of course, is working for you. And that's me. Um, again, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter to get all of my tips and information, which is at drlaurieV.com. You can subscribe at drlaurieV.com to my newsletter. It's free and you can subscribe easily. It'll come into your email box with lots of information. It's simple to do. Whatever device you're on, I want you to go to drlaurieV.com. Go to the specials and shop page, which is right at the top. If you have a smartphone that you're using or other device, there's a hamburger menu. You can see the green arrows here. Hit the hamburger menu. That's the three lines that are horizontal. And then hit that menu, and then it'll bring you to the shop, specials and shop page. Click on that, and then you're going to see all of your options. I always like the free thumbs up because everybody likes free. And you can go there, and at the free thumbs up menu, you can click on that, and it'll give you a place where you can sign up for the newsletter. It's easy to find. Explore the whole website. There's all kinds of research information. There's all kinds of blogs with selling tips. There's a lot of information that I built on that website for all of you to use. So get there too. If you're not watching videos, I hope you're on the website looking for more information that can help you. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm fielding your questions with expert answers and I'm talking to guests. Thanks for being my guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good, sweetheart. What's happening? Where are you tonight? Yeah, I have a book, um, okay. Heath's Infallible Counterfeit Detector at Sight. From the U.S. Treasury Department, it's the pocket edition. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, uh, this one was entered in uh, in 1870. Nice. All right. But, uh, all the pages are intact. It has all the, the plates. Oh, sorry. There you go. So you have all the plates in it. All right. Yes, the, the plates are the illustrations, if you don't yes. use that term. Okay. Yeah. Um, like all of these. It's very detailed. Very nice. Okay. So the Treasury Department is showing you all the different currencies, right? Right. And where they uh, were being counterfeited from. That's right. That's right. So that's an interesting story. That's an interesting book. There are lots of people who want that. So when you're thinking about selling tips, I want you to think about as far out of the box as you can get. I want you to break out of the box. You know, they say think beyond the box, yes. think outside the box. I want you to do that. So think about all the different people who might want that. And that's who you have to market to when you're doing those SEO or those search engine optimization keywords when you're listing something. How much did you pay for that book? Absolutely nothing. Oh, free is always good. I rescued two boxes of books that were going to be thrown in the garbage from a thrift store. 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So yes. Okay. So I always say, you know, free is good. Free is great. Free is almost as good as chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) Value on that book alone in that condition, early edition, the pocket edition was popular because people could actually take it with them. Of course, we like small things, pocket editions, value on that book. I've seen it resell for about $40. So you're able to really command a little bit of money for that piece that you got for free. And that wasn't the only book you got for free. You got a lot of them for free. Right. Correct. That's right. Okay. Remember when you're looking at books and I talk about old books in another video, I want you to look for a nice strong spine. And I like the decoration on the front. That one had lovely gilded decoration on the front of that particular book. So look for those features and others. You can watch it in another video about my other tips about books. Hi, Cindy. You are better than a Saturday night seafood buffet. (laughs) With the drawn butter, right? (laughs) Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Thanks for being with me. I had a question, but I didn't get it attached to my super sticker. Okay, well, that's all right. When Bunton Seed Company went out of business in Louisville, I bought three two by three plastic signage that attached to the back of eight wooden shelves. Okay, that's good. I didn't get the question. What's the question? (laughs) Jackie. So a couple of different things. If you actually have these pieces, um, uh, a lot of pieces like that are pretty popular, you know, like the orange crates, the orange crate labels from Florida, um, the apple crates from Washington state, you know, like places like Chelan or um, Yakima or those other places that have the, the orchards. Same thing with those pieces. They will have some value. The actual signs that went on top of it from Louisville. Great. So then we have to practice. How do we say Louisville? I always say Louisville. Some people say Louisville. Anyway, how can I get in touch for getting over 60 cookie jars of praise? You can get in touch with me. That's easy. DrLoriV.com. Simple. You just got in touch. So get in touch. Yeah, I can certainly take care of those and help you with those. There's lots of different options. Maybe you'd want to do a 30-minute video call with me for those. Maybe you decide that you want to use one of my other services. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Video calls with me, very, very popular because you have me at your disposal for a certain amount of time. You can ask all those questions that you're doing, trying to get, of course, answered for, for a long time. And a lot of people say, wow, I can just sit here and talk to Dr. Lurie and ask all those questions. No question is a bad question. I'll tell you what they're really worth. I'll do the research for you. I'll cut down a lot of your time and I'll get right to the point so you know, of course, the value and you know what the market really will allow for pieces like that. Yeah, I can do those 60 cookie jars, sure. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Jess calling from Pittsburgh. Nice to see you. I love Pittsburgh. It looks like you've got a lovely oak Hoosier cabinet there that you're lining up a couple works on paper near. (laughs) Yes, it is just my uh, shelf for right now. And on Tuesday mornings when I appear in Pittsburgh on the national, on of course their network TV, it's very funny because I talked to one of the hosts and he's always talking about oak furniture. It's like the one thing he remembers. <laughs> well, we have it. You do have it. What have you got tonight? What would you like me to talk to you about? So these are three works on paper. And I'm going to evaluate one. Okay. Choose um, one. Yeah. Do you, do you have a preference or? No, nope, choose one. Um, maybe this one. Okay. Mm. Choose the one you like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, I got it for $5 at a rummage sale. Good. And it has a name. It says C Volkmar. And then it also okay. says etched by Charles Volkmar. Okay. So Charles Volkmar is the etcher C Volkmar, right? He's the etcher. He's probably also the person who drew the piece. So here's how etchings work. You're going to cut it into the plate. It's called an intaglio process. You cut it in. Intaglio in Italian actually means to cut in or to incise. So basically, you cut it into a plate, you ink the plate, you press it down onto a piece of paper. So if the artist is also the etcher, then you don't have a printer working with it. The artist and the printer are the same person. And that happens sometimes. Your piece probably dates to the late 19th, early 20th century. You notice those big panorama pieces? It's like a big panorama form. That's pretty popular at the late part of the 1800s, early 1900s. Value on that piece that you got for five bucks, it's worth about $75. Okay. Is it any different that there's three of them or not really? You could. What do you mean it's any different? Like, is it worth more because there's three similar ones? By the the same artist? No. Well, then they're 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 not not necessarily a group. They're not necessarily, they're definitely not a group if they're not by the same artist, right? So basically an artist would do that particular work. It's not the same image each time. So that work stands alone. The other work stand alone. 
Okay, cool. Thank you. I You're appreciate welcome. it. Okay. Thanks. My pleasure. Nice to be with you. So yeah, a couple of things, you know, when you see things that are similar, a lot of people say, oh, well, it must be a set. But if it's not done by the same artist, no. And then, you know, sometimes works of art, in fact, are, thank you, Tiki Tutu and Johnny. Um, a couple of things, like people are surprised because you might say, oh, it's not part of it. Like the pieces next to me here are actually both by the same artist and they're both part of a larger triptych or three panel painting. And you'd say, but they could stand alone. They could, it's up to the artists what they decide to do and whether or not they want them always to retain together or whether or not they can stand alone. It just depends on what the artist decides. So that's, you know, art, what the artist decides. Liz, uh, thank you for working hard to give us valuable knowledge. You're welcome. You've given me a great appreciation for costume jewelry. You're welcome. And now I'm making triple what I did last year. Thanks to you. I'm very happy for you. I want you all to succeed. I can help you do it if you help me and share this channel. Thank you very much. I've heard it from many of you. Triple what you made last year. I'm so happy to hear that. You all deserve it. You all work hard. And I'll work hard supporting you. So make sure you support me too. Thank you for telling me that. That's wonderful. I'm grateful to hear that. There's lots of money in a lot of different things. If costume jewelry is what you want, it's just one of the ways you can make money with, of course, art and antiques and with letting the Dr. Lori YouTube channel help you. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm Hi, good, thanks. I'm Sue from Danville, Pennsylvania. Nice to see you. So Hi. tell me about yeah. this animal. I, I, well, let's see if we can get this right. So quail, pheasant. Sorry, from our right here. You're okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pheasant. Yep. A star and door stop. I got it at any antiques stop for ten dollars is it a hubley is it is it a hubley, it is a hubley. Is it marked? It it's, is i'm marked sorry hubley. yeah it's marked hubley yes okay and you might say ubly oh yeah ubly. now look yeah. at that can you show them can yeah. you show that to the camera again yeah to the middle of the camera all right i want you all to look at that color you see that color it kind of looks like caramel ice cream sundae after it's been sitting there a little while it's kind of got a little of the vanilla ice cream is starting to take on that butterscotch and that caramel that color tells you that this piece is relatively old. I want you to look at color and try to identify materials. I want to show you what to look for. Nobody else on these channels are able to do that. Oh, they're showing you what they're shopping for, and that's fun, sure. But this is where you're going to know what to look for. And that's why I want to make sure that you know what to look for. That color is beautiful. So now it looks like this piece has, of course, it's lived a little bit, right? right? So it's been loved a little bit, but it is, of course, a cast iron piece. It's been nicely painted and well decorated. It looks like it's pretty tall, too. Is it eight inches tall? Yes. Very nice. So a run-of-the-mill doorstop might be $75, maybe $85. How much did you pay for yours? $10. Yours is worth about $125 because of the decoration. Okay, and Because of the, the age as well as the quality of the actual materials. Hubley's a very, very well known, of course, Lancaster, Pennsylvania area um, manufacturer, very well known. I remember I did an appraisal for a client and I remember the staircase, you know, huge staircase, I would call it a mountain staircase. I, I would hate a house like that because <laughs> all this mountain all the way up, but it was like one of those staircases that must've had 20 steps to get to the second floor. And every single step had a Hubley or Ubly, um, doorstop on it. It was all little flower doorstops all the way up. It was really cute. So they look great in anybody's house. And they look great if you just put them up on a um, on a, a shelf or on a cabinet or wherever. And if you're, you know, if you hunt pheasants or you like, of course, bird hunting, then that's a pretty nice piece. Thanks so much. Nice to hear from you from Danville. Lori, I am, you opened up a new world for us. For oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm, I'm sorry, I was talking over you. What were you saying? No, I said you've opened up a whole new world for me. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be able to do that. I'm lucky to be able to do it, and I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Thank you for watching the channel. Thanks to all of you. I'm Dr. Lori. I hope you had fun tonight. Ask Dr. Lori live, of course. We'll see you again next time. Thanks for being with me. Don't forget to share. Woo, I was just on Dr. Lori's video. Woo! <laughs>